done. So kind of what were your thoughts as far as implementing these cameras, you know, as far as the timeline goes? How long do you think it will be before we'll be able to implement them? You know, I think that's, it, it's tough to identify a definitive timeline because there's, there's so many unknowns. And, and when those unknowns get addressed, um, be it at the national level, be it at, you know, the, the state or local level, with our Public Records Act and, and getting some specific legislation identifying uh, or specific to, if you will, the body-worn cameras uh, and what is captured uh, within that technology. It, it's difficult to put an exact timeline on, I think. So, although we don't know when, is it something that we definitely are going to be doing in the future? I think body-worn cameras in law enforcement, it, it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. There's still just a lot that has yet to be fleshed out on the policy considerations. All right, now, I know we were kind of talking about pricing, so doing something like this, about how much would that cost? I think a good ballpark is going to be between 180000 to 200000 somewhere in there uh, would be a starting cost. And what all does that include? That's going to include the camera itself, probably some of the, uh, the behind the scenes of the structure with servers, software, uh, the various components that all go into that, that are, are, are all built into a, a body-worn camera package, if you will, but redaction software, if you will, um, tagging software to be able to tag and encode the video appropriately for retention, apply retention policies to that as to when it's purged and how long it's held. Um, all those things are taken into the account. It's not just a body-worn camera, um, a piece of equipment clipped to the front of an officer. Uh, there's a lot of the behind-the-scenes technology that comes with it. So I know you were kind of you know, speaking a little bit about this during the presentation, but are there currently any laws regarding these body-worn cameras? Not specific to body-worn cameras in Wyoming. So that kind of leads to my next question. What are some of the concerns that accompany body-worn cameras? A lot of the, the policy concerns concerning uh, the civil liberties and the privacy issues, uh, not only for the officer, but for the, you know, I refer to them as stakeholders in uh, deploying the body on camera program within the police department. And the stakeholders range everywhere from officers in the department uh, to the citizens being contacted and, and captured on the body on camera to bystanders, witnesses, victims, uh, the families of all those individuals. And it's the citizens themselves with the community, as well as stakeholders in that. So, there's my qualifications. It's all right. Um, now, on the flip side of that, I know there are some benefits to it. So, what are some of the major benefits of implementing the camera? So, back to your previous about the, the, it's the civil liberty and privacy issues um, for all those different people involved. Um, are really have yet to be flushed out depending on where you are on that spectrum, if you will, as to how you view law enforcement. You'll have some individuals that are solely looking at it from the standpoint of identifying bad apples within a police department. Um, and then you have the other side of the spectrum that recognizes body worn cameras uh, to protect officers uh, from frivolous allegations or complaints against them. And that carries into your next question as far as the benefits. One of the biggest benefits is they have the data to show that complaints have actually gone down where body-worn cameras have been implemented. Um, it, that stems largely from the citizens knowing that the encounter is being captured on a camera and that any kind of frivolous complaint or allegation that they want to come make um, is going to be quite quickly uh, debunked. Um, on view of the footage of that. So, I know you said before you want to implement them in Casper, you need research to be done, you need specific laws, and I also know that Mills already has implemented them, so have you been speaking with the Mills department, are you kind of taking some of their observations into consideration? We're looking at uh, how it's going for them, and I've talked to Chief Preciado over there, and has very positive reviews as to how it's, it's working for them. I've, I've looked at their policies and, and what they have put together. And again, we're just uh, standing in the background and continuing to wait and see how things develop nationally, see if any issues come up with them um, that they get faced with and be able to learn and adapt from that. 
Did you know has Mills face any issues? Not there. All right, and then I think my um, final question is, we were kind of talking about during your presentation that there's already recorders that you're a certain length away from your car. Um, is this something that we would still be using even if we did start implementing cameras? Yes, the in-car system wouldn't, wouldn't change uh, with what we have and what we've had fielded for how many years we got it. Nine years. Nine years with what we've had on the car system for. None of that would change. The way we're using that wouldn't be altered at all. It would just incorporate into the body of the case to actually catch things outside the dash cam. All right, and then is there anything else that you think is important to mention that maybe I haven't asked you? I don't think so. Again, we're trying to be just very uh, methodical and deliberate in, in assessing um, bringing in body-worn cameras to the Casper Police Department. Uh, we want to look at it from the end of the officer in the department and the protections it can provide us uh, and the benefits that it can bring us, but at the same time, take into consideration uh, the citizenry as well recognizing that a lot of information can potentially be captured on the body one camera. Uh, things that one might feel to be private. And you know, how do we account for that footage being captured by, let's be honest, a government entity? And how is that going to be put to use or not put to use and, and protected? And those are all very valid concerns and ones we want to be able to have definitive answers to uh, to provide the citizens. That's what's important. I know there was the last question, I just thought of one more before. Um, I know you were talking about some of your benchmarks and the things you're waiting for. I don't think I've asked you this yet, but what are, what are some specific things that you are waiting for before you implement them here? I'd like to see an amendment to the, the Public Records Act that more clearly identifies and specifies uh, the release of body-worn camera footage, um, under what circumstances it can be released, under what circumstances it will be protected. Um, and that will allow us to really have the legal standing based on statute as to be able to explain to somebody why you're not going to come in and get blanket body cam footage of something and to provide assurance then to the victims and other individuals that would like that rightfully so to remain private, something that may be captured on that, um, that they have the assurance that they're actually backed by the state statute that protects that information that's been collected. You 